Hey everyone, in this lesson we're talking about the embryological process known as gastrulation. So to begin, what is gastrulation? Well, gastrulation is an embryological process where the implanted blastula forms three germ layers. We'll talk about what those germ layers are in a moment. Now, gastrulation occurs during the third week following fertilization of the egg. And it is a transformative process whereby a bilameter disc comprising epiblast and hypoblast cells, so two layers, gets transformed into a trilameter disc comprising ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. So ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm are these three germ layers. We'll talk a bit more about what they will become later on. So that means that gastration is a transformative process where epiblast and hypoblast cells and their layers will eventually become ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. So this lesson will be talking about the steps whereby this process occurs. So what is the ectoderm? Well, the ectoderm is the external germ layer and it forms from the epiblast layer and it later differentiates into the integumentary and nervous systems and also the pituitary gland. So this layer will eventually become what is known as the skin. It'll also become the nervous system, so brain, spinal cord, and the rest of the peripheral nervous system. And it also forms into the pituitary gland. Now the mesoderm is the middle layer, the middle germ layer. It literally forms within or in the middle of the epiblast and hypoblast layers. And the mesoderm will later differentiate into musculoskeletal, this cardiovascular and reproductive systems. It'll also differentiate into connective tissue as well. So this mostly will become muscle, bone, the gonads, etc. And the third germ layer is the endoderm. The endoderm is the inner layer or the internal layer. It forms from the hypoblast layer and it will later differentiate into epithelial layers of the lungs, GI tract, the liver, pancreas, bladder, thyroid, and parathyroid glands. So it will comprise much of the internal viscera of an organism. So after an egg has been fertilized by a sperm, that zygote will eventually become what is known as a blastocyst. We'll talk a bit more about this process in another lesson. So the blastocyst contains a inner cell mass. This inner cell mass is what will become the organism itself. And the outside of the blastocyst contains cells known as trophoblast cells. Now, the blastocyst itself contains an inner core, which is known as the blastocele. The blastocele contains a fluid. So this area here, this hollowed out area is known as the blastocele, contains fluid, which nourishes these inner cells of the inner cell mass. So as the blastocyst develops, the trophoblast cells differentiate into syncytiotrophoblasts and cytotrophoblasts. So the syncytiotrophoblasts become invasive and they release digestive enzymes allowing the blastocyst to implant into the endometrium of the uterus. Eventually, these syncytiotrophoblasts will erode the endometrial lining and will actually settle within the endometrial layer of the uterus. So the blastocyst will actually enter into the uh, endometrium of the uterus. Now the inner cell mass will begin to differentiate into two layers. That bilaminar disc we were talking about earlier, those two layers will continue to develop and will form cavities within each other. And these two layers will be connected to the rest of the cells via something known as a connecting stalk. This will allow those two layers to stay connected to the rest of the or the rest of the organism, including the trophoblast cells. These syncytial trophoblast cells that penetrate deep into the endometrial layer 
will eventually become the placenta of the organism. We'll talk about this later in another lesson. Now, this process of gastrulation occurs at these two layers within the organism. So we're going to zoom up on this portion of the organism in the next slide, and we're going to talk about the process of gastrulation. So in this slide, we've zoomed up on those two layers and we've removed the rest of the background. Now, just to get our orientation of where we are again, this is the connecting stalk that connects the two layers to the rest of the cells. So just to get our orientation again, this is the inner cell mass. And this inner cell mass, as we mentioned before, will eventually undergo differentiation. So the cells of the inner cell mass undergo differentiation to form epiblast and hypoblast cells. The epiblast cells, you can think of them on the outside, and the hypoblast cells are more inside. So the hypoblast cells surround a larger cavity known as the yolk sac. This will eventually become the yolk sac of the organism. The epiblast cells will form a cavity known as the um, amniotic cavity. So the next thing that happens is that cells in the epiblast layer will begin to migrate into the midline to form what is known as a primitive streak. So epiblast cells from two ends of the epiblast layer will begin to migrate into the midline to form this primitive streak. And the streak itself will elongate from a caudal to cranial axis. So as these epiblast cells migrate into the midline, they form that crease known as the primitive streak, and some of these epiblast cells will migrate further into the primitive streak, and they will themselves enter into the hypoblast layer. These epiblast cells that enter into the hypoblast layer will transform that layer into the endoderm. And the remaining epiblast cells that stay within the epiblast layer, these will differentiate into the ectoderm. So the remaining epiblast cells will eventually differentiate into the ectoderm. This process occurs during the 14 to 15 days following fertilization. But there's also a large amount of cells, a large amount of epiblast cells that are in between the endoderm and ectoderm that have yet to differentiate. And those majority of epiblast cells that occupy the space between the epiblast and hypoblast layers will themselves differentiate to form mesoderm. So the cells that have not differentiated that are with or are between the endoderm and ectoderm, they will eventually differentiate. These cells are epiblast cells. They will eventually differentiate to form the mesoderm of the organism. So the formation of the mesoderm takes place at roughly 16 days following fertilization and the first mesodermal tissue to form is the notochord of the organism. We'll talk about more about this in a later lesson. So this is essentially the process of gastrulation whereby we transform two layers, the epiblast and hypoblast layers, into the three germ layers, the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. And the three germ layers will eventually become the organism itself. So the ectoderm will become the skin and nervous system, the mesoderm will become the cardiovascular system and the musculoskeletal system, and the endoderm will become the majority of the internal viscera of the organism. And that's the process of gastrulation. So in future lessons we're going to talk about neurulation and other embryological processes. So I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And if you have any concerns or questions, please leave them in the comments below. And again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.